Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. And yes, from the title, I will be doing a Warriors off-season video. Now, it's going to be a Warriors off-season video, but it's a review of our draft picks that we got from the 2023 draft. So we're going to do a quick review of the draft, and also in this video, a Warriors off-season about the draft picks that we got, who are the players we got, explain them a little bit, and then also a little bit more on the Chris Paul trade and how that will help and a lot of people are saying it's not going to work but I'm going to explain it in my own way on how the Chris Paul trade works. There's a bit of both the draft and a bit of the Chris Paul stuff. So this is one of the, I'll be doing, this is a, going to be a, this will be a Warriors off-season video. Now I did do a Warriors crazy off-season plan back a little time ago. This is also part of, it's a, it's a bit, this video is part of the Warriors off-season and then also be other off-season little NBA off-season videos as well but this is Mainly focus on the Warriors. But here we go, straight into it. A quick draft recap. Now, NBA draft was about, when was it? Uh, it was about three days ago, four days ago, something like that. Um, but first off, we're going to the top 14 picks. We'll review the top 14 of the draft lottery of what teams got to what. So first off, number one, Victor Wembanyama from the Metropolitan 92 from France, and Spurs selected them. So of course, no dramas there. Victor was going to go number one, no matter what. Um, Victor Wembanyama, obviously, got a call from Greg Popovich when he got drafted. Like, obviously, Victor's number one. Number two was Brendan Miller. Brendan Miller from Alabama and was selected by the Hornets. Now, Brendan Miller and Scoot Henderson had a bit of biff and who who's going to go number two. I thought I, when I did my mock draft, I put uh, Scoot at number two because I thought it'd be a better fit for the Hornets with Scoot and a better fit with Miller with um, Lillard. But now Scoot's number three, yes. Scoot's number three from G League and Knight for the Trailblazers. So Scoot is wearing number zero zero and Damien Lillard is number zero. And he saw, I saw the roster, I have to be number zero zero. So Damien Lillard is probably going to opt out, probably going to leave Portland with a trade, I reckon. But anyway, now number four and five are the Thompson brothers. Eamon Thompson from Overtime Elite, selected by the Rockets, number four. Number five, um, Uzza Thompson. Uh, for the Pistons. Now, those is, for, I think, first brothers in the same draft in the top 10 selected back-to-back. -back. So those two Thompson guys are going to be great. They have not played a game of basketball without each other. So it's going to be a bit... I want to see how it goes for this next season, but it's going to be good. Number six, Magic chose Anthony Black from Arkansas. Uh, of course, I, I'm, I've predicted Anthony Black to be down further down to like the Wizards at number nine or Jazz at number nine. But anyway, number seven, they got Billy Cooper, Cooley Barley, whatever, from Metropolitan 92. So same team as Victor Wimanyama. He was selected at, from the Pacers, but now he was traded to Washington. So now a bit, Bill, uh, Bill will play for Washington. And then number eight is where it comes here. Jarish Walker from Houston is selected from the Wizards, but now he'll be traded in Indiana. So number seven, number eight picks swap. So you got Walker going to Pacers, and then you got uh, Cooper Barley going to uh, um, Washington. So number nine, then you got Taylor Hendrick, Central Florida, selected by the Jazz. No doubt about that. I thought he would be definitely in top ten. Uh, number eleven, sorry, number ten, sorry, is Kaysom Wallace from Kentucky going to the Mad Mavericks. I, d I did predict that one right. I think I predicted that one perfectly right. Wallace at number 10. I got that one right. At number 11, Magic select Jet Howard from Michigan. Now, I'm not too sure why they did that. They did get up the top. They did get Anthony Black, and then you add Jet Howard. I don't know. I thought, honestly, a little bit of a, a, um, a shocker in the draft was um, uh, Cam Whitmore. He was picked at number 20th behind the Warriors, so... Don't know what's happened there, so it was a bit of a, a slack off there. I thought they would go a bit better. Anyway, number 12, Derek Lively the second from Duke to the Thunder. That is key. That's a great pick. I think they did swap picks. I think, something like that. Moving on, 13, I love this guy. Grady Dick from Kansas going to the Raptors. He is great. His fit on the draft was made. If I find a photo of him, put it up. His fit fit perfectly with the Raptors. The red and red for the Raptors is great. And to finish it off from the lottery, number 14, Jordan Hawkins going from um, uh, Connecticut going to Pelicans. So there it is. There's the top 14 there. Now, that's the um, top top picks from the draft. So that's a quick recap. It was a great night. I watched, the, I watched the whole draft. It was such a good draft. Watched the whole thing from pick 1 to pick 58. It was great. Moving on now to Warriors stuff. 
we're going to look at the Warriors picks in the draft. Now, there's two main ones, and there's a third one that I'm not too sure of, but we'll get to that in a sec. So number first pick, the Warriors got the only really pick the Warriors got in the draft was number 19. They got Brandon Pazemski from Santa Clara. He's a guard slash forward. So Brandon Pazemski, gun of the Warriors. I, I wasn't thinking we would get Brandon. I thought we were going to get another guy like a bigger man, but this guy is a guard and forward. He can, he's amazing. So... He's he's emerged as a top sixty um, prospect. He's never he did not touch a ball since eighth grade. So he's 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 averaging just over four point eight points per game. He's got sixteen contests with um uh, as a freshman. So he did transfer to Santa Clara, and then he absolutely dominated Santa Clara. So I think he went from in Gargas or something like that. Um, but he went to Santa Clara, so he's, he really transferred to Santa Clara to perform his game, and he play, he's playing very well, averaging 19.9 points on 48, 44, and 77% shooting. He's an athlete rebounder for a guard as well, ranking up to 8.8 .8 rebounds per game to go along with uh, four assists and two steals. So that that's the overview of Brendan. He is a guard slash four that can rebound. That's what the Warriors need this next season. Rebounding, and Brendan brings that. So he's a great steal, I think, from the draft. I Now that we're looking over it now, I think this is a great pick. you got a guard who can shoot and also an elite rebounder. And he was the player of the year in um, Santa Clara, I believe. He's a vers vers versatile contributor. He is um, great beyond the arc, amazing shooting. His wingspan, um, he has a short wingspan, but makes it makes it tougher to get his sh shot off in the NBA. So Santa Clara's been a reliable NBA pipeline of late, with Jalen Williams also being there. And Pazansky's big numbers aren't just fluff. His shooting is impressive as well. His stories in shooting for him. He finished with 10 points, 8 assists, and 7 minutes in his scrimmage at the Combine. So that's good numbers there. Good to get it up. And that's a great analysis of him. He is... Well, what we're getting here, the Warriors are getting, is a versatile um, contributor, a shooter, a rebounder, and that's the three things we need and we can improve on. So great pick. I think we, I want to see Brendan and this these draft picks get more minutes next season. As you got versus, as a Warriors team, I, I want to see them getting more minutes. And then next up, they got they got a they got a trade in. So the fifty seventh pick is Trace Jackson Davis from Indiana. Now this was from the Wizards, and we got traded to the Warriors. So we got a second pick in the draft. He's a forward slash center. Honestly, you've got his athleticism for a center. His mobility, he can rebound, he can block, he can do everything, and that's what the Warriors need—a big man. Um, in the our team, so he's averaging twenty point nine points. 11 rebounds, 4 assists, 3 blocks in 30, um, 35 minutes per game. He was voted a first-team All-American. Uh, he's a big, big man, all Big Ten first-team defensive team. He's finished career with only two captains. Um, that's what I'm reading here. So overall, you're getting Jackson Davis, big man, elite rebounder, elite scorer, his athleticism is big as a center. He can dominate the paint on both its offense and defense. He's at various post moves. Um, easy to he runs the floor hard and can pick up easy points in the transition. So, or by getting to the free throw line as well. So he's a more capable and willing passer out of the post. So this what I'm reading here is that he is a great fit with the Warriors. Now you got Curry running down, then you add Chris Paul. You got. Uh, Clay feeding him in the post. You got um, Pazanski feeding him as well. So it's, these are two great pickups for the Warriors. I love it. And there was also one more that I think we got or read somewhere. Jarvan Johnson. He was an undrafted player. So I, I'm not too sure about that. Don't know a lot of information about that. But I think we get three guys from the draft only. Anyway, that's the draft. I'm very happy with our picks now. Brandon Pazanski and Trace Jackson Davis. Perfect guys fit for this team. Now, moving on. Switching to Chris Paul. Now, yes, as you know, the Warriors are getting a 38-year-old injury-prone player. Chris Paul came from Washington, um, got traded from Suns to Washington for Bradley Beal and got traded from Wizards to Warriors for Jordan Poole. So we are getting a 38-year-old. We get that. This trade means that the Warriors will have more bench depth and Chris Paul to help the Warriors with the second unit when Steph Curry's off the floor. What that means is that 
this last season, this season, whenever you think about it, the Warriors were great when Curry's on the floor. When Curry gets off for some rest, the Warriors slip down a lot. So if you add Chris Paul, a veteran guard, 38-year-old, has been through the playoffs, been through everything, if he can, I think he would have to probably start off the bench. He can start, but he hasn't come off. The, he hasn't started off the bench in his whole career. So I reckon he it'll be best if he comes off the bench in the second unit with um, Kaminga, Mooney, Jackson Davis, Pazanski, Paul, and then you could add um, Jamarco Green if you got Divincenzo if they get them back. If he gets if Warriors get them get him back, but I think Chris Paul will definitely be that guy to help the Warriors off the bench for this next season. He helped reach the Suns in the NBA Finals in 2021, helped the Rockers with a 3-2 series lead against the Warriors, but lost because of his injury. Chris Paul is a veteran guard that knows what it takes. So he's been to the playoffs, been to the finals, knows what it takes to win. And I think he'll be perfect to come off the bench with the second unit and help the Warriors with the second unit while Curry's resting. And even when Chris Paul and Curry are on, they'll be dominant. So yes, he's injury prone. We know he's injury prone, and but he will only be playing, I think, around 18 minutes per game because you've got Steph, Clay, which are the main guys in the team. So you're not going to... Because if you have Curry and Clay who are, aren't... They're, they're injury, but not injury prone yet. You've got Chris Paul, who is injury prone a lot with his um, heels and backs and hips and all that. But I think if you if he's playing only around... He'll probably play around only 18 minutes because you've got Curry and Clay. Chris Paul could be that guy who's just just under, playing around 18 minutes. And because of that, he, he should probably stay healthy during those 18 minutes and not play as much time, like 30 minutes, 35 minutes, as Steph Curry and Clay. If When Chris Paul playing in the second unit, he will allow Kaminga and now Jackson Davis to perform at their best. And having Chris Paul and Jackson Davis and Kaminga on the floor means Lob City right now. If you get Chris Paul... He's an assist god. He can pass the ball so well, like Nikola Jokic in, in, a, in a way. you got Chris Paul, you got Jackson Davis and Kaminga on the floor. It's Lob City there. Those two can jump high. We've seen Kaminga last year on his improvement in the offseason and through last season. They can He, he can provide those guys as easy buckets as we saw in, in the Jackson Davis report. Anyway, that is what I mean for that. The only thing stopping Chris Paul right now when, the, when he hits the floor for the Warriors is injuries. But now, I think when he's healthy, playing around 18 minutes, he should be fine. The Warriors are going to go for a deep postseason run. That's what I'm saying there. The only thing stopping Chris Paul right now is injury. That's the only thing. Maybe some health issues as well, but I think injury is really the main thing for Chris Paul. And if he stay healthy, I don't think he'll get injured or tired around 18 minutes of game when you're just trying to get some wins in. Now, that's all I think they care about. Right now... If the Warriors are healthy, they're going to go for a deep playoff run, even the NBA Finals. Picture Curry, Thompson, Green, Wiggins, Looney starting, because that's the best starting five, I think, in the whole NBA. And off the bench, you could put Chris Paul, Kaminga, Jackson Davis, Bozanski, Mooney, DiVincenzo, if they can get DiVincenzo back, Jermichael Green. The Warriors are stacked with shooting, rebounds, assists, and scoring. So the Warriors, I think the Warriors should go out there and find another big man in free agency, like a Lopez or a Cousins or even someone from the G League to get them to try them out uh, for a tryout. But I think that bench, they've got depth now. They've got Chris Paul, the best starting lineup. This is this will only help if it's healthy, of course. First, they need to re-sign Draymond Green. The Poole and Draymond Green situation has gone out the door now. Poole's out. He's gone. Now they just need, they should find some room to maybe get trade someone else, trade maybe a Mooney or DiVincenzo or whatever, and get another big man off the bench, will be set, and they need to re-sign Dream. For a smaller contract, then the Warriors are going to go for a deep postseason run, I reckon. That's what I think this whole Chris Paul situation is. I've explained it. Second unit, Chris Paul, helping the Warriors get some points and get some leads when, when Curry's off the floor. When you re-sign Draymond Green, look to get another big man in the free agency, like a Lopez or maybe a Cousins or whatever big man you can find, a Yucca Pirtle. But still, that's the Warriors' plan. Now, this is that's all for the video. NBA draft review and now the Warriors stuff. This is also part of the Warriors' off-season videos, off-season plan type thing. Anyway, that is all we got. What do you guys reckon? I think this is good. If Warriors can just re-sign Draymond Green... 
get another big man, probably find a big man in the offseason, we will be set. We got Chris Paul, we got Curry, Clay, Draymond, Wiggins, Looney. First of all, got to resign Draymond Green. That's the first step. If we can't do that, then it's going to be a bit hard, but I reckon we can still do that. They're, all, they're going to find a way to get Draymond Green, I reckon. Anyway, I'm going to stop talking. That's all the video is. Thank you. If you guys stay until the, till the end, thank you, guys. That is all. Um, if you have not seen the Warriors off-season, crazy off-season plan that I posted about three weeks ago, whenever, I'll put that at the end of the video for you guys to go watch. I explained everything with trades, roster, stats, and all that. Go check that out, and then watch my NBA off-season playlist of all the NBA off-season stuff I've done. Anyway, more off-season. NBA off-season is in full swing right now. Anyway, it's going to be good. Till next time, guys. Enjoy life and have fun. Peace. Thanks.